consequence of this much more rigorous definition of what an algorithm is. Okay? So the definition of an algorithm is, uh, is important. So let's, uh, let's get into that a little bit. Um, okay, so informally, you know, uh, an algorithm is yeah, just, just, just a set of instructions. You carry out some task. Uh, AKA, also known as you know, other words, other labels, uh, where I'm, I'm looking, it's getting a little dark. I think I made. I'm looking for my hat. I don't see it. <coughs> <It's not. coughs> okay, switch on the light. Put on my hat. I seem to be coughing more lately. I suspect. Uh, so I live in Xiamen, city on the southeast coast of China, and it's had a reputation for a long time uh, being uh, pretty well pollution free because you know it's on the coast, and you know, the sea winds sweep away the, the garbage, but. Uh, as by Chinese standards, Xiamen is quite modern and uh, relatively affluent city, you know, again by Chinese standards, and hence the rapid growth of the number of cars on the road, and I've, you know, I've seen it just the two and a half years I've been in this apartment, uh, there are now traffic jams regularly, regularly, there are just too many cars, not enough, uh, not enough highways and so forth, and a lot of people. <laughs> And I suspect um, you know, all the pollution coming from cars is uh, lowering the air quality. So I notice my throat sort of you know, clogging up with garbage uh, increasingly. So anyway, yeah, another side issue. Right. So uh, now algorithms have played a part in mathematics in the history of mathematics for a long time. For example, uh, you know, how do you find how do you find the prime numbers? Well, there's, there's an algorithm for that. Um, the sieve, if you know any uh, uh, number theory, you, you may be aware of the, so the famous, uh, from the ancient Greek time, 2,000 years ago, uh, the sieve, S-I-E-V-E, -E, uh, sieve, of uh, Aristosthenes, I think, uh, that's the guy. You know, his, his algorithm for finding the prime numbers, you, you, you say, you give me a, a positive integer, say 1,000, and this algorithm will allow you to find all the prime numbers so equal to, to that given number. Okay. So algorithms have been uh, useful in mathematics for a long time. Uh, another example are uh, GCDs, you know, greatest common uh, divisors. What's the largest positive integer that uh, that will divide into two, two numbers, stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, but a precise definition, that's, that's what I'm talking about in the square here. So, but a precise definition of what an algorithm is, that only really got going in the 20th century. It's a pretty standard symbol for 20th century. Like you have the century number inside a big capital C. So this is just shorthand for 20th century, a 20th century. Um, now, the, prior to this more rigorous formal definition of what a, an algorithm is, uh, prior to that, uh, the, you know, the early mathematicians, they, their, their notion of what an algorithm was pretty intuitive, right? and, and also how to use them. Uh, but, but that wasn't, it, it, it was not enough to, to allow a deeper understanding of what an algorithm is. It was, this, it was vague and intuitive, and uh, with, without a more precise definition of an algorithm, um, the later work uh, like impossibility proofs and stuff like that, and the notion of computability. Can something be computed? That, that kind of question, which we'll, we'll get into next chapter. Uh, uh, you know, fascinating stuff. Uh, that was not possible. So a prerequisite to do that kind of stuff, you know, computability, impossibility proofs, you know, uh, some things cannot be computed, cannot be solved, uh, cannot be decided, stuff like that. Uh, all that was dependent on the uh, rigorous uh, definition of what an algorithm is. Uh, yeah, we're, heading, we're heading towards that. Uh, okay, so 
Now, um, to give you a little bit of history, it's, it's an interesting story, and it, it, it shows very clearly uh, why uh, people were misguided in a sense. You know, mathematicians, famous ones, like uh, Hilbert, you know, pretty well the top uh, mathematician of his time, uh, around 1900 or so. Um, you know, brilliant guy, uh, not, not just a genius, but also creative and zany. And, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the best, that's the best combination, right? High, high intelligence, you know, genius intelligence, and creative. You know, the, the, those two qualities tend to be independent of each other. So uh, it's a rare individual who's extraordinary in both, right? and they, they tend to be the best performers because they have lots of ideas through their creativity and they're able to analyze them and have huge uh, background knowledge um, because of their high intelligence. You know, if, if you're really smart, uh, you can absorb new ideas very fast uh, because you, you, know, you understand it. You just, it you, your high intelligence allows you to, uh, to understand an argument uh, very quickly. <laughs> Arguing in the opposite direction, like uh, for myself, in preparation for future courses in future years, even future decades, uh, you know, I'm looking now, you know, uh, you know, af after the, the working day, so to speak, of uh, writing the board and filming and, and uh, pre-processing and then just uploading it to YouTube. You know, once all that's over, then, then you know, I do my time, so to speak. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this PhD2 level stuff. And man, uh, those, you know, the guys creating that stuff, uh, most, a lot of them are over 200 IQ. I mean, they're the super genius. And uh, just go, trying to go from line to line, you know, uh, which, which for them, I guess, is fairly easy because their background knowledge is enormous. Right? They're so smart. They, they just absorb this stuff at great speed. And so, uh, you know, by the time they're in their 50s, 60s, their, uh, their knowledge base is just gargantuan. Right? So they have this huge background knowledge that they can draw on and uh, they're creative as well. So, uh, yeah, incredibly powerful. Like recently, I think I've come across uh, the Italian equivalent of uh, Ed Witten. You know, Ed Witten's reputed to be one of, if not the smartest guys on the planet. He's the only math physicist ever to have won the Fields Medal. I have my doubts about that. Um, you know, I think there are one or two mathematicians probably smarter, but you know, it's debatable. Anyway, uh, recently I um, come across an Italian guy who I think is the Italian equivalent of uh, Ed Witten. His name's Frey, uh, F-R-E, acute. And I read his stuff and you just sense this enormous background of, uh, you know, he's, he's you know, he's, he's absorbed just virtually all the stuff there is. It's like this universal knowledge of very modern uh, theoretical physics and the pure math. You know, he's both, definitely both. And he just manipulates all these hugely uh, variable, um, various and wide-ranging concepts with, with ease. And, and it's just breathtaking to, to, to read. But, uh, you know, be because he has this huge background going from one line to the next in, in his deductions. And therefore, you know, we could probably uh, bring in this you know, feature from this branch of math and, and that would allow us to do this and this and this. And, and, and it's like trench warfare, <laughs> every step. You, you have to struggle. So uh, the, the, the smarter you are, the, uh, you know, the, the easier, easier that is to do. Uh, well, I'm nowhere near in that IQ range, so I, I have to struggle. All right. So anyway, even, even someone as brilliant as Hilbert uh, tripped up um, you know, because he did not have this rigorous uh, definition of what an algorithm was. His, his intuitive notion of an algorithm uh, made him think that certain things would be possible that in fact weren't. Now, uh, so I'll give you a bit of the history to illustrate this, this point. Uh, the point being that um, you, you need, you need a, this, uh, well, we haven't done it yet, but this coming uh, more rigorous definition of what an algorithm is to have insight on why a particular problem he was talking about uh, could not, well, it turned out later, 